Good morning or afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another weather forecast. But I'm going to kind of merge into the tropics again, even though there's really nothing except this small little disturbance here. You're probably wondering, why am I going back in the tropics when there's nothing to, to really talk about? Well, there is some to topic that I came up with to talk about for the tropics here, since tropics obviously are over slash not over. This video is going to be talking about, is the never-ending 2020 hurricane season coming to an end? Like, is it actually going to end soon, or is it is it over? Is it done? Is there is it going to stop at 30? And is it going to stop at IOTA? That's exactly what we're we'll looking at this video here. Looking at the conditions from now on to deep in December, really determining whether this season has a shot to bring in a one or two more named storms, or is it is it actually just over and it stops at 30, just beating 2005? But we're gonna be looking at this video, for, we're looking at all those details for 10 to 15 minutes here. So be sure to watch this to get a better idea whether the season's over or is it still never ending. So be sure to like the uh, hit uh, not the like the subscribe like the video if you really enjoyed the topic and content subscribe if you're new and hit the notification icon if you got if you want to get notified as soon as I make a video. But with that further ado, let's get into the tropics. So we have a new disturbance here that came into the National Hurricane Center uh, last evening on November 22nd. Uh, so we're still, we still have disturbances in, meaning we still have somewhat tropics alive right now. Uh, so tropics aren't dead right now. Uh, obviously that disturbance, uh, in the Western Caribbean after Iota never happened. So could this be Kappa? That's exactly the question there. Could we get our 31st name storm? That'd be very interesting here. Uh, really making the lead above, making the lead ahead of 2005 even larger and a bigger gap making it a even bigger and huge uh just blowout compared to 2005 so 10 percent chance for the next 48 hours which is actually decent compared to its five day percentage at a 20 percent so based on this five five day outlook percentage or probability the 10 percent is pretty uh, the 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 48 hours is pretty high. At a 10, usually you have like a 20. When you have a 20 for five days, it's usually a zero for the 48 hours. But the fact we have a 10 for the 40 hours means there's a chance this could actually form, if it does, less than 48 hours, something like that, that it has almost an equal probability to the five days as is the 48 hours there. But it looks like it's going to be heading toward uh, out to sea, not necessarily posing a threat to any land. Except Bermuda in the cone of development. But obviously, this still has a very low chance of developing here. And it has its cone of development all the way up here. So it could very well not develop at all. Or if it develops, it would develop past Bermuda here. Will it be very weak? It most likely will. But obviously, we will keep uh, an eye on this. But not really an eye catcher or a nail biter at this point. But let's go take a look now at the actual conditions. Looking at whether the... Really, I guess you could say the outlook or if the um, conditions are really winding down to bring in a timeline and a due date to the season here. The season ends in exactly seven days here. That's the mark. November 30th is the last day of the typical hurricane season in the Atlantic. So will these conditions that are winding down, such as temperatures, shear, shears going up, uh, temperatures are going down as well and the SSTs like is is the time over that's exactly what we'll be looking at in the next few slides again nothing of concern right now before we actually get into the conditions necessarily we're looking at, looking at what we have right now so we do actually have a very big blob of dryer here into the central uh Atlantic northern Atlantic there and of course this disturbance is way to the north of that it is actually in an area of moisture which is actually why it is uh, an area of development or a possibility and investigate not an investigation sorry not that's not an invest uh just a general disturbance here so we are having an area of really a decent amount of moisture which is what the national hair center has for the 20 percent chance for around right there heading uh this development area right here so there is actually a good amount of moisture here, so that's exactly what they're watching. Some tropical storms uh, around a low pressure here. So there are some tropical storms 
not tro- not tropical storm, but tropical storm, like uh, like tropical systems such as a like rain, like tropical rain. That's what I meant. There is some tropical rain or some thunderstorms that are circulating around the low pressure, which is exactly what they're looking at right here. So this is kind of the only area right now. I mean, there is some moisture blowing up in the Western Caribbean. There just really isn't too much potential there. And obviously the tropical Atlantic here, the MDR, it's been dead since August. Nothing's going to happen here. You never see a November storm developing here. So uh, the SSTs are really just really dying off here in the MDR. We haven't actually mentioned the MDR since July or August. So it's actually weird to mention the MDR, main developed region. But it definitely won't be the main developed region if there even is even more development here this season. Which there is a chance one to two name, one to, one to two more name storms are likely here. Uh, it just it, the time is ticking and the chances are just ending really it's really a small probability we see a storm before december or uh, before the end of the the, the kind of i guess you say the regular end but there still could be storms in december it's just will we get one before another storm before that november 30th timeline i don't think so but uh, there is a chance we can get a storm or two in December, and that will be very interesting. And very, uh, it will be very interesting. That's going to be kind of towards the Western Caribbean. That's exactly what we'll be looking at here. Exactly of this, that moisture we start we see now. But yeah, nothing to keep in mind right now, and except for that little disturbance there. So a factor to this obviously very active, historic, never-ending season is because of just the strong La Nina we've had since August to november we currently i mean it has gone all the way down to negative 1.5 a very strong la nina and it is going up a little bit but still at negative 1.2 basically if you round it up which is still a very strong la nina and la nina's obviously caused less shear and less drier in the subtropical atlantic there which is exactly why we've had so many storms just blow up ever since august and that has to take part because of la nina uh, so that's exactly kind of the e- the EPAC ever since August has been a really, I want to say quiet, just not like it was in July or June, where it was kind of ahead of two, uh, ahead of the Atlantic. Actually, the Atlantic and uh, Eastern, Eastern Pacific were kind of tied and back and forth in between May to July. Ever since we started going back more and more deeper into La Nina status, it's just the Atlantic has taken over. And even though we're sort of strong La Nina, conditions will worsen for the atlantic uh and that's not just because it's going up why that has nothing to do with that it's because the general winter the general winter conditions going to winter in the atlantic shear is going to gradually go up that's just how it goes at this time of year it's not because any of the el nino 3.4 index or the index uh, nino index regions in the pacific it has nothing to do with that if it was actually like at a neutral phase or neutral or El Nino, obviously it would have a huge factor. But it going slightly up has doesn't do has doesn't really have to do anything with that increase in shear and drier expected between now to December. Uh, that's exactly why the season ends November thirtieth because after November thirtieth, shear and dry air typically just really drastically goes up in the Atlantic, uh, and as well temperatures as the seas are just going to be very low. We still have some temperatures that can withstand systems. It's just, obviously, if they're drier there and shear, they can't survive or form. So, it, that's exactly why. But this this has something to do with uh, the shear or drier. So, here's a look now at the SSTs. They're really, really dropping very fast here. Uh, Asian, uh, the ocean heat content's really going down a lot in the Western Caribbean, which is exactly what allowed Ada, Iota, Delta, uh, Laura, not Laura, sorry, not Laura, um, Delta is what I, I think I meant Delta, even though I already said that. Delta, Ada, Iota, all these storms that blew up in the Western Caribbean, including Marco, all that was because that very... Uh, undisturbed ocean heat content between May to July to even August just untouched and that's exactly why these storms blew up the ocean heat content the SSTs but this is really going down 
now that we've had so many storms in the last two months go through the Western Caribbean, that's really winding down. They're losing a lot of supply there. So systems that go over in the Western Caribbean now, they probably won't RI as much because not only are the temperatures going down now, only 28 to 27 degrees Celsius, so is the ocean heat content there. And look at the Gulf. I mean, the Northern Gulf, 23 degrees Celsius. You're continuing to drop significantly, getting some up to 21 degrees Celsius as well off the coast of New Orleans. Houston, I mean, these temperatures are really dropping fast, so nothing will survive the northern Gulf. The southern Gulf is really starting to really wind down now, only 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. We had 29 just when, um, just when, uh, this, uh, these storms in the past few weeks were there. I mean, it's, it's really crazy what's happening. I mean, theta as well, uh, not, sorry, not theta, um, iota. Uh, wait, yeah, not, not Iota. Uh, yeah, Theta, when it obviously uh, passed by. No, sorry, I mean Ada. Well, I'm getting really confused. Ada, when it passed by, uh, making landfall in Nicaragua, and all, all going all the way to Florida, temperatures were 29 degrees Celsius there. And now they're all the way down to 26, 27 here. Uh, obviously, temperatures in, in the, uh, the MDR are really dying off as well. 27, 28, nothing really is going to survive there. Not because of the water, but because of the dryer and shear. That's exactly where that will come in effect. Um, like we saw that big dust wave in June. It's going to do the same thing here. Obviously, nothing will survive north of this. Obviously, so really winding down to just one region. This one region is significantly dropping in temperatures and uh, ocean heat content, which is what these storms have been depending and living off. And if this is really all minimizing and just losing less of its power, is this season basically over? I mean, is that one region where we can have storms, that one region where the season's still alive at, independent at, is it going to be basically unfavorable in the next few days and few weeks? Like, that, if it is, then that's the end of the season. Really, you won't have a storm in Florida. You won't have a storm coming off Africa. You won't have a storm near South America. You won't have a storm in the Northern Gulf. I mean... It's all dependent on the Western Caribbean. The Western Caribbean is losing a lot of potential. Uh, and not now, but obviously in the next few weeks, it will just go even at a faster rate, losing more and more energy. And again, here's the ocean heat content. I mean, it has just been wasted in the past few weeks here. I mean, uh, before Ada, we were seeing reds, dark reds up here in the, right here in the 150s. And now we're... <laughs> Right here in the Western Caribbean where we had that 150 here, these 150s and uh, triple digits, we're seeing literally in the in near zero. Literally, that's how much ocean heat, content, ocean heat content has been wasted. And where we have kind of the most, it's really in only around just in the triple digits, around 100, where it was also 150 there. So we've wasted a ton of ocean heat content. So really, this, will not, this won't really be running out because storms are moving by. But this will continue to drop because SSTs are also dropping. So even if there's no storms moving this area, it will still drop. So really, there's a chance that by the time storm a storm actually develops in its general region, it's going to be really dual minimum and possibly not even a chance for it to actually survive. Let's take a look now at the tropical shear here uh, and the uh, vertical shear here for the tropical Atlantic. So here we are now. Uh, basically, the end of November there so this is where kind of where we are now right there and look it's 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 it really expected to continue to uh go up into December here this year in the tropical Atlantic, like the general tropical Atlantic here um so I mean it's it's really almost done at this point here's gonna continue to really rise drier as well there's actually not a map for this for drier but here we are now we're look this is exactly why this season was so active um Especially after August, September. I mean, look at this. You no, know, October really had a low shear as well, really low. And then look, February, March, April, obviously very high. By December, they'll be kind of tied with these some those some those same amount of shear. So it'll be basically like a, a mid winter kind of conditions, which obviously means the winter you don't have travel systems really, except for very rare Alex. Here, shear here in the next five days, obviously, it's really going to, um, try not shear, drier, drier in the next five days. Obviously, it's really unfavorable in the whole Gulf of Mexico and the whole East Coast. Nothing has a chance to form in the next five days here. Obviously, where we had the disturbance 
uh, where they had the disturbance in the very uh, interesting cloud cover right here, there actually isn't really drier there. So could it form or could it advance to an invest? There is a possibility. The thing is, it once it actually forms, will it be too late to actually form to an actual storm? Maybe depression, but a storm? I'm not sure, because we just saw those cool, really cold waters off Bermuda and to the north of Bermuda, and that's exactly what that cone of development is. And it still has only a 10% for 48 hours and only 20% for five days here. And I believe by the time it actually had the chance of forming, this dryer we have here in the middle of the North Atlantic will continue to expand eastward. Nothing the MDR, obviously, but again, you just don't have storms forming the, forming the MDR at this time of the year. No, no dryer whatsoever in the Western Caribbean, but that will change as we get further advanced into now December here. But let's take a look now at the future outlooks on dryer and shear. So here's a look now at the GFS. Look at the dryer here. As you do see the next, uh, this is currently what we're seeing. Of course, a big blob of dryer right here in the north in the general uh, tropical Atlantic and a ton of dryer across the, much of the east coast there in Gulf Coast of the United States. We have that one little, one little blob there of moisture where that uh, area of development is possibly for that uh, disturbance there. And you do see as we now get in the next 60-ish hours, I mean, this dryer is going to be pushing. And I mean pushing. Look, we have two blobs that are going to meet up with each other. One to the west and one, sorry, one to the west and one to the east. Look at how the big blob of dryer. This is just going to be almost taking up the whole North Atlantic. Because obviously there will be moisture up here, but obviously there's like literally zero degree sussed waters there. Look at that. These all may meet up. Like all, look at all that dryer. This is 72 hours. This is Wednesday. I mean, look at that. Literally all of this dryer taking up not only much of the North Atlantic, but including the Western Caribbean, which is the only region we can have a storm that actually forms. Uh, this for for this time of season or this time of year. Look at that. All that Western Caribbean is in drier. Like I'm saying, drier will drastically go up as well as shear in the next few days and weeks. So could the season be over? There's a chance it'll have to take a miracle for a little blob of, of moisture like this to survive anything like this ahead of it. But again, this is only 72 hours and 130 hours from now. This is now November 28th. Uh, extreme amounts of dryer now continue to advance in the Western Caribbean. Uh, by Tuesday, December 1st, still there, still drier there. By December 4th, still drier in the Western Caribbean. But guess what? We have another blob coming off that has not even let any dry air or any moisture in the between these drier gaps. So this can be drier after drier in the Western Caribbean. By December 8th, still drier in the Western Caribbean, Gulf, and Southeast Coast of the United States, and drier right here. Uh, off Africa. So there's really no opportunities because from now on, there's no gap uh, for any type of moisture in the Western Caribbean. There's one little right here, but that's way too close to the equator to actually form anything as it advances westward. It won't provide the dry air. And then we have another blob coming right behind it. There's really no chance for moisture to actually form there. There's just no chance uh, whatsoever here. Let's check out the shear. Again, we're seeing a ton of shear right now. I mean, a ton. All the way from the United States here to Africa with a whole little, t t really tunnel and canal of shear. Uh, only area that hasn't really had too much right now is the North Atlantic, really far up in the middle of nowhere, and portions of the Western Caribbean. This is now by uh, next week, and there by 29th, there's a shear all over the place. I mean, all, look, the whole MDR. No chance in the MDR for anything to form. Well over 50 knot shear. Look at all the shear here in the Western Caribbean. There's literally shear almost all, almost in every corner of the North Atlantic there. There's like no chance for anything to form whatsoever. There's no chance. There's no opportunity. There is some little air bubbles, but those bubbles won't last more than 24 hours. And as these storms, as low pressures move into areas, it's just going to get caught. I mean, there's really, if you look at, if you look all the way from now to December 8th, there's just no opportunity for anything to form. And really, chances, or as we advance more and more and more after December 8th, just things will get way worse. It really, at this point, you can only depend on this one little area right here. You can only depend right here for any type of no, any type of storm. And look, I mean, look, this whole area is just covered and covered in shear. You have one small area, and the least amount of shear you'll actually see in this area is 20, 20 30 knots. Still, with this, with this time of the year, storms will be very weak. Uh, I know we saw, obviously, Iota. 
uh, I later become a category five. But again, that's when the ocean heat content was really high, and that's when the SSCs were 29 degrees Celsius. Ada, Iota, they all took out all that ocean heat content. So these storms, if any storm actually manages to survive this year, it'll be extremely weak. Tropical storm, Cat One, maybe that's it. And the just conditions get worse and worse and worse. Same thing occurs with the dry air. Just actually, the dry is way worse. I mean, all over the place. There's just really no chance if you look at it for anything to form. So, in conclusion, is the season over? I mean, is it over? It's been quiet ever since Iota. If you look at the next two week outlook, it's looking very bad and good. Good for no more storms. Bad for. It's looking very bad for condition wise. Condition wise, it's very bad for, to withstand a hurricane or any type of system. So, there's actually a better chance this season ends. And it really ended. It, there's a better chance that this season has ended than more storms to come. So, I guess this season could be wrapped up. I'm not saying there won't be any more named storms. I'm just saying just look at the condition the next two weeks. And after two weeks, really, that you're talking about late December. Late December. The only January storm we've had was Alex. That's the only time. And conditions by mid to late December will just be even two times worse. So I, I, I think the season could be very well close to ending.